is my competition is some chick who she messes up this job. It's back to El Salvador for her ass. Right. And that's like a machete and a revolution. So she's like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God, you're like, my hands hurt. <laughs> it is so hot in here. I mean, yeah. she's crushing it, dude. And she her and the other girl, they're in competition with each other. Like they're having fun. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. sleep on a floor anymore. You know, and it's just like and I'm like, oh, God, yeah. This is when's lunch? <laughs> like this. Pocket party. And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter. And you know him from Big Time Rush. That's right. Craig Coleman. Craig Coleman. Yes. I'm laughing because uh, he just told me, he's like, yeah, I was on, I was on it once. So. <laughs> If you were watching that one time on that one day, or maybe it's in reruns, I don't know. Yeah, no, I still get checks every now and then. I'll get a check for like $6.43. And I'm like, man, if I was in like a thousand of these, we'd oh, be making yeah. some serious money. I know. I did the Jamie Foxx show. It's called A Thanksgiving to Remember. And it was, uh, I guess, a mm -hmm. Thanksgiving episode. And it was from 1996. And it's crazy that I still get those checks and I was just yeah. in one, one scene, one episode, 96 right. of the checks are still pretty good. And uh, I mean, you know, they're not down to like the pennies or anything yet, but um, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if, like you said, you were like a regular on a series and you're, uh, you know, or, or, or if your name was Jamie Fox and you're like, you know, it's your show, Jamie, the Jamie Fox forget show. It. Forget you know? it. You'd live off that forever. I know I'm looking here. Do I have a picture? I thought I had a picture uh, or maybe I posted it, you know, of um, when I was on the Jamie Foxx show. I, I got to show you this photo. And I, I, I wish I knew how to bring the pictures up on my on my uh, this Zoom thing. I know it's through screen sharing or something like that. But uh, mm, uh, I have no idea. If I asked my daughter, she probably would know. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know. Oh, I guess I just put it in the Insta stories. But you basically just see me with like the full head of hair. And, and I'm like, yeah, I remember you know, that, dude. Back yeah, when I used I was, to see you on TV. I was cast as a vanilla ice type of guy where I'm like, yo, man, I saw the whole thing, homie. And he was like, he was like, I'm standing here on the street. Are there any, did any, can anyone tell me what happened? He's like a news reporter. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, homie, I saw the whole thing, man. You know, <laughs> that's I, awesome. I got to do the whole, like, you know, that kind of character and stuff. Yeah, so, no, no, I love it. Like, like, uh, I remember when he used to do the rooster, What's up, Rooster? What's up? What's up, Rooster? I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's what got me on TV, man. Like the first yeah. time. I was even trying to. I I, uh, um, I was literally at the comedy store talking about growing up in Fresno. And and I had this routine where I talk about, hey, I grew up in Fresno in an all Latino neighborhood. Or I might have said all Mexican <laughs> neighborhood. I don't know what I said, but whatever. And uh, and, and the kids at school like, hey, what's up, Rooster? Do my homework, stupid. That's ah! funny, do my homework. Yo, come on, smart. What's up, schoolboy? You know, because <laughs> I go, I used to wear the glasses, but I wasn't that smart. They right. copy off my paper, and then they're like, bro, you're like a retarded rooster. That's you hilarious. Crow? You crow when the sun goes down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the picture. I found it. Here I am. Here we go. Here's just a little screen. Yo, yo, yo. There we yo, go. That yo, guy. That I remember, guy. I remember that doom, guy, doom, dude. Doom, 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 doom. Yes, yeah, so you can see my hair sticking out in the front. Nice. Right there, but... Hair yeah, off so to the side. Hat off to the to side. This... Yeah, and it's funny because uh, oh, and by the way, this is now I'm a Jeff look. I'm, I'm a Jeff Ross lookalike. Yeah, go. right. I saw, I saw that. that. I saw that. <laughs> My brother from another mother. But um, <laughs> it's funny because I here's why here's why you have to watch kind of this even back then in '96. I remember I was in the wardrobe trailer. And uh, they give me my, my, cause you know, I'm, I'm playing a, like, you know, a guy on the street or whatever, what up thug, you know, like that was kind of, you know, that kind of guy. And so they gave me the baggy clothes, the, the cap, they turn it sideways. I got the bandana, the whole, like, yeah. yeah. And what's funny is that, you know, you hear this voice, yo man, I saw the whole thing, homie. And then he goes, step forward, young man. And then all of a sudden I come to, it was me, you know? And then the joke is, you know, that he sees me and he's like, ice, ice, baby. And he pushed me, pushes me away. Right. <laughs> So I'm in the wardrobe and uh, all the different like, you know, like extras were in there and like the assistants and they're all giggling and they're like, oh, you know, I'm making them laugh. And they go, they go, they're like, yeah, you look 
like a straight up thug. And then one of them goes, until you get to the face. And everyone laughs. We're like, ah, uh, yeah, take it to my face. I'm like Richie Cunningham or you know, you. Ralph Mouth. Or... Yeah. So right. then I literally left the, the wardrobe trailer and I walked to the soundstage 20 seconds later. And um, a couple of, I don't know who they were, if they were producers, I don't know who they were. These two ladies, they were, they were, they had like the, the glasses down and she had the clipboard. She's like, hold up. She's like looking at me. She's like, okay. She's looking like a thug. And I go, which is, and I go, and I, and I basically stole the punchline that I just heard. And I go, yeah, until you get to the face. <laughs> and it was, like, <laughs> so, it's like somebody pumped the brakes and they were like, no, uh, thugs come in all shades. Okay. And I'm just like, oh, and you, and I'm already nervous because I'm on a set for the first time. And, sure. And I'm like, oh, did I say something? I'm just saying what I heard in the wardrobe, like, hey, you know, and. Oh, dude. Yeah, I work on set. So I'm um, be going from being the actor to yeah. on the other side of things. Yeah, it's just like, wow, it's a whole other reality of how, how they think of actors. And uh, yeah, right. That side. And, oh, yeah. What about this? What about this? I'll tell one more story. Then I want you to I want to hear some of these stories. Like oh, yeah. Like yeah. That. So then I go to craft server. The reason I remember this, because it was my very first time being on like a sitcom, like, you know, the big time, whatever. It yeah, was, yeah, was sure. There. And so they're so then they were they, they dismissed me. They were nice. They were like, OK, yeah, whatever. Like they're like, OK, go get yourself something to eat, whatever. You know, like the guy, the the um, set director or no, the set. Who's the person, the stage manager? First AD. Like, somebody like this. St somebody stage manager, somebody like, OK, you're you know, your trailers over here. If you want to get us something to eat, craft services over there and um or crafty or whatever the nickname they whatever they mm -hmm. called it right right so you know at, at that time i'd never really heard that phrase but i kind of knew like that's where the you could get breakfast because i think he said go get some <laughs> breakfast at craft whatever so i'm like right. okay so i go over there and then here comes another guy with some attitude like the guy behind the thing he's like oh this is for cast only right and right. i'm like i'm like oh, I'm, I'm in the I'm cast, cast. <laughs> exactly and he goes no you're not and, and I go, uh, yeah, I am. Like, and then I start thinking, well, yeah, I'm not really like Jamie Fox. I'm not, I don't, you know, but I'm the cast. So I go, I go, well, no, I, I go, I auditioned. I got this part. He goes, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Then, you know. And then he <laughs> let, you know, then I got some food, and it was just a lot of misunderstandings. I was probably well, and, he thought, know, oh, maybe yeah. your background. You're like, I ain't background fool. <laughs> Exactly. I'm getting paid like 500 to be here, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus residuals. No. Yeah, and besides, <laughs> dude over there just said I could get me a breakfast burrito. <laughs> yeah. So what's your take on that? What do you what do you think all this like like they're like do you see that happen a lot where oh. they're super yeah. Like what oh, do you see? Yeah, what kind of stuff dude. do you see? Yeah, I mean, I've seen, you know, we'll do uh what's called the tech scout where it's like the heads of all the departments come to the mm. location they're going to shoot at, you know, and then they all say, Oh, I'm going to need this, this, you know, we're going to bring this, we're going to put lights over here. You know, our department's like, we're going to get rid of all this furniture and put our stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, a few times, you know, sometimes they'll be like, Hey, do you mind if we, you know, hang here? Cause they, they basically pay for a four hour window and it's like, sure, dude, I'm making 150 bucks. So I'll give you another hour, of, you know, maybe we'll do two yeah. hours and I'll still get that 150 and uh, they'll be sitting there and they'll do like a production meeting, you know, and I've seen them like where they're like, they're going through the photos of people that are auditioning and they'll watch their auditions, you know, and they'll be like, oh, so homely. Look at this one. And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my you know? gosh. <laughs> and they'll be like. Oh Jesus! Did she just crawl out from a bush? Look at this lady, <laughs> you know. Oh, dang. And I'm wow. like, damn, dude! Like, how brutal, <laughs> you know? And they'll just they'll just dress you down from your audition, and you know, they're just they're just looking at because you know they're going to look at like you know a hundred people. And so I guess to make it fun, <laughs> let's let's be little and let's, uh, you know, in these, oh, these in trash. Yeah. But it's also those are like um, commercials. Yeah. So that's a different planet than uh, TV and film. Um, and of course, the big actors, they treat they treat very well. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I'm privy to things like uh, I won't say who he is, but he's a he's a pretty he's not not that he's famous but he uh he has a lot of shows on tv right now like he he's put a lot of money in my pocket because i know i've worked on several of his shows but he has this thing where he has to have starbucks at like you know 
now, you know, and, uh, you know, dude's <laughs> worth a ton of money and he makes, you know, a lot of people work for him. So, you know, he, the guy generates a lot of money for the city. And yeah. so the PAs, it's one of these things where if he's like Starbucks, you a you have to either know where a Starbucks is in the area and you need to have that within like 10 minutes. So these guys are genius and they just have a stack of Starbucks cups oh. <laughs> and they're all, Hey, he wants a Starbucks. And so you see the dudes like this commiserating. And then this dude comes walking by me. He goes, Oh, he goes, yeah, check it out. He goes, Oh, we'll get your Starbucks. He goes yeah. from craft services, you know, <laughs> and he's got the warmer. He's got the thing. So it, when he boom, he comes in like five minutes later. Here's your Starbucks. Starbucks like, flying in. Don't they say yeah, like that? Like flying exactly. in Starbucks. And like you, so he's seeing are... the, the hot cup of coffee and it's like the piping hot Starbucks with the Java jacket and the whole thing. And meanwhile, it's just nuked backstage in the kitchen. He has no idea and he doesn't need to know. Yeah. As, probably, as far as. Yeah. As far as he's concerned, he snapped his fingers and like eight people right. ran and made and it, it probably happen. was. I'm assuming it's probably Starbucks coffee, but it's just in those cardboard containers from no. earlier in the morning. Oh, just regular. No, no, they're yeah. like, no, they told me they go. Oh, he's drinking your coffee, dude. He's drinking the same thing you're drinking. <laughs> you're not getting a Starbucks cup. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's probably after the 80th time of dude trying to like scramble and find a Starbucks and leaping yeah. over homeless people. And, you know, yeah like what a pain in the ass i wonder what he's gonna think the one time the time that he actually tastes a real starbucks cup of coffee is he gonna be like this doesn't taste right and he throws it back yeah the, this tastes too book. good, <laughs> this, tastes too good. Come, this doesn't taste like dirty water this is going <laughs> this on is here real starbucks i wonder yeah. what that is our mind like you know certain things where it's just a um, a blind taste test like we have no you know what i mean like i'd like to do that with you know if there's certain things I, i'm pretty sure i could i could pick out you know, like, yeah. And then there's other things I don't think I could, you know, like between, for example, bottled water and like filtered water, you know, mm. like, you I don't can, know if I could, I don't know. Can, you think you, could? you can taste? Well, I can taste when I drink like uh, tap water, I can taste. The, oh yeah. Um, for chlorine. Sure, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I've lived in like Alaska. It's like, ah, fresh, fresh water. Oh, wow. There's even a place where people go and it's glacier water and you like dip your jugs in the, river hey oh yeah Not those hey jugs. dipping <laughs> jugs in the river <laughs> it's and it's like popular beach <laughs> no. yeah it's just... those binoculars dip those jugs <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's just crazy fresh you know water it's like insane you know what i'm gonna see if i have this here i'm gonna i'm gonna show you something that's pretty cool how do you like this show so far pretty good right by the way here i am acting with john travolta in the movie be cool check it out if you like this show and you want to show your support, every little bit helps. Go to DarrenCarter.com. I'm on PayPal or Venmo at Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. Also, I'm available on Cameo. Also, Jemmy. All right, let's get back into the show. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Well, I don't know if you still hear me, but... Yeah, yeah. Maybe, um... Oh, yes, here we go. Check this out. Um... This is pretty amazing. By the way, are you are you on TikTok at all? Uh, no, I've decided no. I'm done with um, Instagram and Twitter. Was as far as I'm going to go after Facebook. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It's funny because I was resisting TikTok. I didn't want to do it. My, you know, my brother-in-law kept saying you got to get on there for like a year and a half. He's like, dance right. on there. You should dance, man, dance. And I'm like, I don't want to do that crap. You know, I just I'm burnt out. I just ugh, another thing. Plus, people. On Instagram, occasionally you can see like these TikToks. They're TikToks, and, yeah. And it's just like some, you know, some, I don't want to sound mean, some middle, middle-aged nobody that's just like, I'm the funny guy at work. And then right. he's a, now he's a TikTok star. And I'm like, it just kind of, it's like a pet peeve, you know, because I'm a middle-aged guy who's a funny guy at work, but I'm just <laughs> like, but I mean, you know, we work writing jokes. I may try. And, I may, I may do I mean? it. We, we've I got can't... our notes and we work on stuff and then. Right. So my point is, I, I I broke down and I joined TikTok about a month ago, <laughs> and uh, and and here's what's frustrating: uh, I haven't gone viral, which I thought uh, I'm like right oh, away. Yeah, right, right away. I, that I, right I away. Not, yeah, right away. I got punched in the face with like some oh, views. You know, like, okay. somebody's <laughs> like, "Honey, Derek Carter's on TikTok." 
yeah. What, stop what you're doing. Exactly. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought like, you know what? All right. You know, cause people would say like, Oh, I got 50, you know, like one guy goes, I got 50,000 views. And I'm like thinking, yeah, but it's probably not real. Views. Wow. You know, like YouTube to me is real views. Like it's very hard to get views on YouTube. And then TikTok, you, you hear like these people get like, they put something up there. Like here's a cat following a laser or something. And, <laughs> and, um, but I'm telling you, uh, but right. I have found. And I will get lucky on TikTok eventually. I yeah, I by will. God, by God. You know, you damn will. it, I will. And I, I, I had a couple of like one video got like eight thousand views, and I'm like, yes, I'm onto something. But then the rest well, are back down to like thirty. And uh, well, all right, all right. Yeah, it was, hey, it was dude, dumb look. it, it yeah. happened. Look at that, dude. Eight grand. <laughs> exactly. That's nice. Yeah, I'm gonna go over the craft service. Do you know who I am? I've got eight thousand views Look, on a TikTok video one day. Uh, I'm an eight K guy, so I don't know what you losers are up to, <laughs> yeah, but eight K, eight K of views. It's kind of where I'm at. But here's what I found that I do like about TikTok is um you do it's almost like I know this is like the this is like idiocracy, the dumbing down of America. I get my news from TikTok, Craig. <laughs> here's what I found. This we're talking about real Starbucks, fake Starbucks. Can you tell the difference? I, I never heard of this until I went on TikTok. There is a uh, a dipping sauce for chicken that tastes exactly like Chick-fil-A's chicks Chick-fil-A sauce. Okay. These ladies, they did a blind, you know, like they put the blindfold. Oh, on I heard about it. this. And I've heard, yeah, that that somebody has figured out the recipe and put it I, online. I'm going to tell you, this is it right here. We actually bought it and it tastes exactly like it. This is uh, that probably you, is it. You get it from Walmart. They call it the chicken dipping sauce or something. But and then they see they don't put the, it's called uh, they got those those uh, criss cut criss cut fries or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this actually tastes just like if you you wouldn't know the difference between this. I don't I don't eat chicka fillet. Oh, then you definitely wouldn't tell no yeah. difference. No, I'm <laughs> fat enough, dude. I'm like trying to stay away from yeah exactly you these days. A, a fridge full. I'm of I'm like water. oh the cocaine factory. Yeah, let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's go there and see. Wonder what they have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, let no. me ask you this. Uh, oh, you know what? I, my OCD wants me to put that back in the fridge. Hold on, let me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. There's no way I could concentrate on the rest of this. I podcast. love, I love how it just took over you. You're all, yeah. You know what? I don't want botulism. I'll be right back. <laughs> exactly. We're all gonna die, and it's my fault for putting this out. Yeah, my wife's like, honey, we don't feel so good. What happened? Damn it! It was that one podcast. Oh. I left, I left dipping sauce out. Room temperature. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have happened with the real dipping sauce from chicken. That's right. No, it's, that yeah. stays out on the counter uh, for, okay, yeah. for weeks. That's true. It really does, actually, doesn't probably. it? Probably. <laughs> they um oh yeah, you said uh you you don't need another like temptation or whatever of, of food. No. Let me ask you a question. And you don't have to say the number. You don't have to say it. But yeah, do, do you know when the last time you stepped on a scale was? Yeah. Every fucking day, dude. Oh, really? Okay. Every day to go, you loser, son of a bitch. <laughs> <clears throat> now that I'm 50, dude, it's so hard. Yeah. It is, man. And it's like... So, it, it, and I'm lazy. I smoke yeah. pot, you know? Yeah. I mean, so... But I'm going to go to work this week at Union Station. And so you walk like five miles whenever you work there. Because... Oh, yeah. Everybody's like, hey, they call you on the radio. Hey, can you come over here to my uh, post? You know, the security guards, you're like, yeah. And that's like a block away. You know what I mean? You're like, you're way over there. You walk all the way over there and you go, yeah, what's up, dude? And they're like, hey, can this guy park this truck right here? I go, yeah. So you remember like 30 minutes ago when I told you anybody from production needs to park right here? They can. I meant that. I meant exactly what I said. And they're like, oh, OK. And you're like, all right. Yeah. Thirteen dollars an hour. OK, I get it. That's why you're calling me to make the big decisions. I get it. I get yeah. it. And then you got to walk back and then you got to walk. And then the someone reason. else calls you about, hey, someone's leaning a table over here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, they're leaning a table by the door and you walk over there and you get there and you're like, oh, well, but it's not in front of the door. And they're like, no, but is that OK? <laughs> yeah you can open the door it's still fine so yeah it's cool oh, okay you're like 
All right, thanks. Now, what happens if they ask a question and you, you don't know the answer? Where you're like, I don't know, like that. Do you? Is there someone that you can ask? Of course, there's several people. I'm like, and oh, let, they me, let me call the boss. And they, they don't walk over and join you. They just tell you over the phone. <laughs> yeah, no, they yeah. don't. I walk They're away from like, them. I yeah, usually, yeah. or I'll just text somebody. Usually, the answer is no. Yeah. I've been yeah. there eight years, so I, I know the answer usually, and it's usually no. The and if, they don't, ask, yeah. if they don't like that answer, and then I go, okay, you know what? I'm going to go over here. I'm going to act like I called somebody about it, and I'm still <laughs> going to tell you no. Yeah. <laughs> Let me check. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. the, hey, do you have this in size eight? Hey, let me walk in the back. Dude walks back behind the curtain. <sighs> no, some dickhead wants to see if we have shoes. <laughs> but I, already, I don't care if they're here or not. No, it looks like we're all out of those, bro. Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I got a size seven, a size nine. Yeah, everything around that. You can go but to the you're... website, but you got to be a member. Yeah, we don't have your fat foot. Okay, my yeah, bad. Exactly. Yeah. The reason I ask about the scale is, uh, you know, I, I I haven't really been getting on a scale until like this last week because I didn't want to know. I was like, you look great, dude. You don't need to worry about it. Well, thank you, but there's a couple of um look when you get all yeah. chubbed out like this, then you need to start freaking out. I think <laughs> you're fine, skin, dude. You're, yeah, skin, you're not a girl, so don't yeah, exactly. you don't need to trip, dude. You're not <laughs> <laughs> you're already married. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let it go. Yeah, dude. It's you're like, fine. You're fine. This you're gonna be my, good, dude. This could be my therapy podcast. I could just yeah. fish for compliments with my guest. Yeah, you, know? you look great, <laughs> you're feeling great, you're fine, Darren. You're doing I got great. The fake, dude. Chi fake Chick fil A sauce over there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's what it's all about, dude. Just pretending we're in the game. I'm doing director's blend coffee from Starbucks. Hey, dude, I do um I do instant now. I've gone to Nest Cafe. Yeah. Wow. Co Costco, gigantic thing in Nescafe, hot water. Wow. This it's like prison coffee, but yeah, it it does its job. That's dude. I'm you know about seven years ago I switched to just straight black coffee. I don't put sugar. I don't put cream. Mm -hmm. I think it's I'm trying to you know like I said get just cut out the calories and just, once you get used to that taste, I, I don't want the other kind. The other oh, kind I've is weird. yeah, I've just yeah, always drank cheap. black coffee just just because I don't need. Yeah bullshit i'm just so like our, no our scale, our scale was broken or so we thought and so we ordered another scale online but then this new scale it wasn't i don't think it was accurate because it was making us look like we were like four pounds lighter and i'm like i don't want that i want the real scale i want to know the real numbers so i can really <laughs> keep myself in check you know like <laughs> I, I for a year had yeah. and i didn't realize it it was a, a, it was like a skinny mirror like at a fun house oh. Yeah. So it kind of stretched you out a little bit, you know? So I'd always look and be like, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Still looking pretty good, dude. And then I walked by uh, like a regular mirror with my shirt off one day and I was like, damn, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> so that's what everybody's seeing? <laughs> oh, man, not good. <laughs> no, oh, me man, that, that happened to me like four years ago. I, my friend, he uh, shout out to Peter Marr. He works for Canon. And uh, he was able to bring one of their, I don't know if it was like their, their, is it called Red? The Red camera or whatever. It's like this 4K, whatever. It's like some high high tech camera from you're talking Canon. to the wrong. You're talking to yeah. the wrong low cap class dude. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he brought, so I was doing a set down at Hermosa Beach at the Comedy Magic Club. And I... after the Comedy, Comedy Magic Club, they give you a little jump drive, a little thumb drive of your set. And so I'd always seen myself, you know, how that looks, you know, and especially with these shirts, it's like, like it just, it, you know, it's just like blue shirt, blue jeans. That's it. This guy's camera was so clear that you could <laughs> tell that I, you could tell that my belly was hanging over my belt. That's hilarious. Underneath the shirt, because it, it <laughs> his, was the true. He's got that National yeah. Geographic camera. Like, as you can see, this lion on the Serengeti <laughs> exactly. is not as sleek and beautiful as once imagined. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because because the way the normal camera looks, it just makes like denim look like dark denim shirt looks like dark. <laughs> this other right. thing was like it showed how faded certain defined. Things 
Yeah, I didn't like it. I was like, man, and plus, you know, and to, to my, you know, not to my credit, but to my, here's an excuse is, uh, you know, one of the pleasures of, of performing at Comedy Magic Club is they have a five star kitchen. So I'm backstage probably loading up on mashed potatoes and salmon. <laughs> like, I didn't know I was going to be filmed in high def right. 4K. Right. I didn't know my shirt was that dirty. What's going I know, on? Seriously, dude, all that. And I told my friend, I go, is that how I really look? Or is that like, is that like, is that how I really look? <laughs> like, I'm horrible exactly he's like yeah that's the yeah true. i was like can that's we do the true like you <laughs> exactly dude I go, don't you have touch-ups yeah. is there like color like you can make every oh that's like, funny yeah. dude that's like so on Instagram, funny you know like there's filters you can keep sliding and it'll make it yeah darker like i go make it look everything dark i don't like all the yeah that yeah dude good. i just don't even care i have hit a point where i'm like i'm doing my best <laughs> and this is the year I crush it, and I yeah I lose some weight. That's gonna happen, uh, but I don't care about. I, I can't do the fine tuning. I can't do the fine tuning. And you look great, yeah. dude. Yeah, thank you. You look I'm, great. I'm, I, I had a you know I ate earlier and don't you like pull tires around the farm or something that, crazy? That's the thing. I love the I do the I do the uh, the workouts. I love the workouts, but I also love to eat. So I just gotta like, Oof. you know, that's the thing. I think sometimes it cancels each other out because I I um. And I think well, if right. you don't work, if you don't do it the right way, all it does is build up your appetite. Like when I was just like doing the bare minimum, I think I was walking a lot, but I was just getting hungrier. So I didn't, I really wasn't burning a lot all of this calories. Ex yeah. All this exercise yeah, exactly. makes me want a pizza. <laughs> exactly. I did that. I bought a, by the way, I bought a pizza yesterday. It, uh, well, I, I was, <laughs> I was up, I was up in, you know, near Fresno up at the farm and I, uh, you know, we're out in the boonies. So to upload a podcast, um, I had to go to the local Starbucks, use the Wi-Fi, and I'm there. And it was super That's dark. right. It's all so rugged. Dark, yeah, rugged, like the dark clouds. And, and all of a sudden, there was like a thunderstorm. And it started raining really hard, like on the car, like hail. And I was like, damn. And I was already hungry for, for a I should get a pizza. pizza. Dude, I was like, I want a pizza. But and I ordered the pizza. And they go, it'll be 25 minutes. And I'm not even Me kidding. and Ed's? Me and Ed's. Did you ever go to me and Ed's? think so is that kind of fancy good right uh you know what it's a chain in the valley the, in the san joaquin valley and and there's there's one that i would go to in hanford and it's really good and then i'm sure they're all good but like but then there's sounds one like went, yeah sounds like something one, me and my mom my mom goes to so well the one i went to yesterday wasn't worth it it was like it wasn't that good and it was mm. like i was like i should have got a like another type type of pizza because i don't know it was here's my point the thunder, the rain, and it was, I'm like, I'm going to get a pizza. It was like, it was really cold. And, uh, and then about, you know, 20 minutes later, it stopped raining. And then, and then it got to like, like, it was like partly cloudy. And then like the sun was really bright. Oh, you're like, now it's taco weather. Yeah. Well, no, actually I was like, damn, I should have just ate like healthy or something. Like why, did I order <laughs> I a pizza? You know? why didn't I get a shrimp salad? I know. But then by the time I'm I eating guilt pizza, pizza and it sucks. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you know, it's like a cozy day and I'll be eating pizza inside. Cause I can't. And then, <laughs> and then it cleared up and I was like, damn it. You know, but by the time I paid for the pizza and went back to the car, it started to, to, to like sprinkle again, not a heavy rain, but a sprinkle. So yeah. I sat in my car and like ate some pizza. I felt good about it. You know, now there you go, dude. That's the most important part. Yeah. By the way, that pizza sucked. I gotta be honest, man. It was a, I got a vegetarian pizza, but then I added oh. sausage. No, I, I added the sausage, but you know, the sausages were like, they were like, they were smaller than they were about the size of a, like a pebble like sausages. A, yeah, like a pencil eraser or something. I yeah, think. I know what you're terrible. talking about. Go, you could, yeah. My wife didn't even know there was sausage. She's like, there was sausage on there? I'm like, yeah, that's how. She's like, I thought this was just bullshit and dough. <laughs> exactly. I know. <laughs> she's, like, uh, she's like, I thought your little broccoli pizza was like uh, good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it sucked. There was broccoli on that's it. That's the best. It oh, that, good. that can be it's great, just, though, yeah. sometimes. So, yeah, I see what you're saying. If yeah. you're going to get a pizza, get a pizza. Yeah, I messed if around. We're gonna get the like veggie this. pizza. Get a salad. Yeah, I should just got a salad, and then, yeah. What's your? Did you have a favorite pizza chain that you go to, or a favorite independent pizza place? Um. Yeah, I mean, the town I was born in, there's a place called um, Chico's, which is uh, amazing. Moses Lake, Washington. That's the only thing that's any good there. Uh, so if you're in Moses Lake, uh, God forbid, and I'm sorry, but go to Chico's. <laughs> yeah and then round table oh you like round table? i gotta try it i haven't had round table in a long time oh, round table's the best 
I like a good root beer every now and then. You ever drink root beer? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, not anymore. Now, I, root beer zero uh, is fantastic. Root beer root zero. Beer zero. It, it tastes better than uh, diet root beer. And yeah, it's uh, it's amazing because I don't drink root beer. I do not drink soda. Again, I don't mainline the heroin. I uh, so I'm doing like methadone by just drinking the Coke Zero. <laughs> I remember as a kid, I, I reached into this cooler, this ice chest, and I was like, I'm gonna get a root beer. And I just popped it open and started drinking it. And it was a cream soda. It was the Different. same. Same color of can, but yeah. It was disgusting. I wasn't expecting if that. If you're not expecting it, it's yeah. Yeah, if you're not expecting not, it, it's not uh, the right thing. Mm. It's not yeah, the I'm same. Right. Yeah. Also, what's another thing? I you ever had like a is it is it cherry coke or oof? So it's another one that's like yeah, but cherry like coke is like holy shit good. This the maybe it wasn't cherry coke, especially the like, movie theater version. It's like oh woo! yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the thing I tasted was it tastes like cough syrup or something. It was like a weird, like store brand. Like mm. I don't know what it was. It was I think cherry but... Pepsi kind of tastes a little mediciney. It was kind of mediciney, and if it was I recall. probably a diet thing or something. If but... it was the diet version, again, it's all I get, so I'll have it, but not as good. Yeah. Definitely not as good. Well, this is probably 1979, and it was probably oh, safely brand. dude, <laughs> so, yeah. So they, so they probably didn't have it down yet. Yeah, know? there was a there was a store we used to go to in the 70s <laughs> that the knockoff yeah. brand would just be a white label, and whatever it was inside, it just said like beans on it in black, <laughs> big black letters. Oh. So you know now they'll have like uh, you know Kirkland, and you're like, oh, looks like Tide, but no, this yeah. would just be like soap, soap and it people. was just literally <laughs> white with black letters. Yeah, it's like, hey, a basket of poor people. Look at that guy. <laughs> I know cola. <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, oh it was gosh. just always like you were like, oh, this is great. You know, you Dude, knew we live, in a, we live in a great time that we've we knew what it was like growing up in the the seventies, the eighties, the and then and then now we know it's like twenty twenty one. Like, yeah, we're we're communicating like this, but we also remember what it was like to communicate. I would say like on a CB radio or you know? or at all or at all. Yeah, like, like when your phone, your friend's phone would be busy like all day, and you're just like, what the? Oh. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I just couldn't even talk to you yesterday because someone was on the phone. <laughs> I remember like a friend would be like, I'll come over tomorrow at three. And I'd be out, you know, I'd be out there on the curb, like looking for every car. <laughs> like, that's not him. Is that him? That's not him. It's just like that whole feeling or, or you beat a restaurant and, and you're and every time somebody come in, ding, ding, you're like, is that them? Like now you could just call yeah. or text or, or actually yeah, where are you, you can, at? You can just like uh, be, pre, you know, preoccupied with your phone. You Who cares? Like, you know, like if a, Seriously. My flight's delayed by a couple hours. Like now I can just, you know, whatever, who cares? I'll just go on there and I got other things to do. But yeah, back in the day, you're just like, well, I guess I could go to the restaurant and get fat. <laughs> just, and Yeah. You're either reading a book or you're sitting there doing jack all. Oh yeah. To, oh yeah. You know how many books I used to buy just from airports just because you're, you got nothing else to do. I still you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just unpacked all these books. We just moved. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, got, I bought this bookshelf just to put all this books up <laughs> that I've had packed away for like a year. It looks great. I, I like the new place. Look at that. The the light, the mic, the background. Yes. You know, Captain yeah. America. I like that. Yeah. You just you created a whole set behind you. Well, one of my uh, one of the uh, longtime listener and fan or whatever, I guess, of our the Full Charge Power Hour, my other podcast that I'm on, uh, he sends me stuff. That's so and cool. He'll send me like he saw that I, I, you know, he knew I liked those. He saw that I co or heard that I collected figurines or whatever. He's like, what else you like? I go, Star Wars. And he's like, boom. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's way that's cool. cool. Hey, way cool. So I want to I want to ask you more questions about um, the acting. I, I remember what last time we talked, we were telling some different audition stories and acting stories. And yeah, it, it's yeah, it, it's funny because when I I, I, oh, you know, I just had on my podcast was uh, Rick Ramos. Yeah. And yeah. My boy. Buddies and he's great, man. And, you know, we were, I, I, I listened um, to his podcast because he talked about leaving Los Angeles after being here for 20 years. From yeah. We talked right after he left. Right. 
Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, he said something that was really, I thought was very astute, you know, something that I hadn't heard in a long time about, you know, what he got paid. Like, I think it was like, because a lot of shift things shifted over to like non-union, like even Taco Bell, like big things are like, you know, non-union. And he mm -hmm. said that you'd get like a $1,500 buyout. And he talked about like, like, you know, for him, he had like a lot of crappy jobs and he said that it's really, he'd have to take off four days, the day of the audition, the day of the callback, the day of the fitting and the day of the shoot. That's four days. Right. And I was just like, wow. And I, and I thought about like, especially if you're a comedian who's pursuing stand up, it's like, it's almost better to just really pursue stand up because to take those crappy jobs and maybe book a $1,500 commercial, it's, it's kind of tough. I, I would imagine, you know, well, I never, I don't do uh, non-union stuff. Like my agent just won't have yeah, it. That's and good. that's, and that's just cause they're just a big agency. Like I'm nobody in this humongous agency. I mean, they got like serious, like serious stars. You know what I mean? Yeah, People that have won awards and like, I've been like in there and been like, damn, like, oh, that's yeah, my competition. Yeah. Like, fuck, I'm not even that dude's competition. I'm like, what am I talking about? <laughs> They're like, oh, you need another fat guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Craig, we got, we got this dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One time I was at my voiceover agent and uh, we were, I was, oh. in the booth. I was in the booth with, um, Actually, in the booth, reading with the guy from Borat, uh, Ken Devikian, I think he is the, uh -huh. the little Armenian guy, the hairy little right. short Armenian guy, and uh, it's it's you know my wife's Armenian, so I was like, oh, can we get a, a photo? So I'm sitting here like fanning out, like, oh, this is great, you know. And yeah, he was, uh, he was so nice though, but like sweet, yeah. It's it's definitely, uh, but but I think about like all the money I would spend on parking meters and driving across town and yeah, running in there and memorizing lines and staying up overnight and you know even in the early days getting a coach because you're you know you're supposed to get an acting coach and i would i would <laughs> no, have, you know i'd, go to, I'd go to their yeah i'd go to their house up in the hills and, and re-audition with them and they <laughs> right. and it's just like you look back like what is it you know <laughs> and then that's you know. you know what dude that's that's yeah. cool and uh and a lot of smarter people than me do do that and they're probably way more successful i just don't have time for all that shit and um i'm not an actor i'm a comedian who uh gets lucky every now and then i just and I only go out really for uh, commercials and there's just a few characters that I always do. And I just do that, that one thing like, Oh, Oh, you know, Oh, blue collar guy. Oh yeah. You know, I'll do like my guy. I do my guy, you know? And, um, do you have any and, secrets? Do you have any, do you have an audition tips like to do your guy? Like, do you uh... No, The only audition tip I have is walk in there. Like you don't give a fuck because you're probably not going to get it. That's yeah. the only that's, you know, I walk, I always do positive attitude with everything I do, but um, just go in, do your thing, uh, you know, dance like the monkey that you are and walk out and let it go. Forget it. Just don't even dwell on it because you can't dwell to, on it. Yeah. Do you ever go ahead? Do you ever try to be funny with the casting people or you don't try to be funny or? No, I just I just do whatever I'm doing, and if if I come off as funny and they laugh, then great. Yeah, yeah, because there's nothing worse than those actors that try uh, too hard and they yeah. miss, and it's awkward. Yeah, yeah, and I've been on the bus, dude, and um, with you know, got on the wrong bus with like the director and the producers, and they're all nine out of ten, they're dicks. They're all mm. people, you know, they're all rich people, and you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'll just say something that's just so like um middle class or like working class that they just like, oh, you know, and just kind of look at you. <laughs> and if the director doesn't laugh, nobody else is gonna, you yeah. know what I mean? If yeah. the boss didn't laugh, shut right. up. Oh, they just no. look at you like shut up, you know. And I've yeah, I've <laughs> said I've said dumb things thinking uh, you know, we're all on the same level, and then I've just I've learned to just just keep my goddamn mouth shut. Um, I remember learning that in acting class. Like I would say something really funny. Like I, I'm a professional comedian. I know when something's funny, and I know yeah. when to like shut up. I I I would pick and choose my little like a sniper. I wouldn't try to be the funny guy every class. But sometimes there was just a perfect setup, and I'd say the thing. Sure. And, and I noticed that like same thing that the stupid classroom people, the actors wouldn't laugh unless the the teacher laughed. Yeah, because they're all if actors. Laughed, they're all yeah, kiss they're all ass. Like, Ooh, I know. Yeah, it's they're all kiss yeah. ass. <laughs> They're all phony kiss ass. Yeah, every goddamn one of them, just about. But usually, when you tell them you're a comedian, they all go, "Whoa!" Like they got respect for that because who's that insane? You know, know. what I mean? Nobody's that insane. You just walk up there, yeah, and just do stuff. Like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs>
I know. But, they, you know, the world they live in is completely different um, of uh, than what we do. You know, being a comedian, you're used to, like, just getting refused by, like, you know, 100 people. You're like, all right. Like, 100 people didn't like you all at the same time. So <laughs> acting yeah. is nothing for me, dude. It does not hurt. It doesn't bother me. You can reject me all day long, and it just doesn't hurt at right. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious, man. Um, but I've also, so- again, you know, I've never went out for like some big movie where they, you know, make bring you back like five times or something and you still don't get it. Yeah, that's a little like, ugh, yeah, that's yeah. way different. I want, I want to ask you a couple things. Um, so how, the, the, the other podcast that I that I love listening to, I check in every now and then it's uh, with Matt Fulcher on. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's the full charge power hour. Yeah, it's, it's mainly it's the it's the three of you. And um, how how did you how did that come about? How did you come about being on a, a, a regular on another podcast? You know what? Because um, Matt's my boy, dude. Matt, like he pulled me out of a, a hole of darkness. I mean, I was like, I was honestly when he I got that call from him. I was I wasn't doing comedy anymore. I was just working. I was working at a factory making locks. And I know really? this, it sounds like something you'd make up, but, you know, most of the people working there were like on parole or um, illegal oh, wow. aliens that yeah. um, that have, you know, those those poor bastards to get citizenship. Like they have to have the same job for 10 years. Oh gosh. Yeah. You know how many times I've been like, hey, you guys, this job sucks. Yeah. There's other jobs. And so. Yeah, and you know they have to stay there because if they just keep bouncing job to job, it, that clock starts over. That clock starts over, dude. It's like they're locked in. Yeah, and know? yeah, hey, and so we would we would have to make locks like a certain amount of locks every hour, right? We're talking like two hundred, and I'm talking like you ever bought a padlock and you see all those yeah. lines? Yeah, those are all thin pieces of metal that you have to put onto oh. four prongs, right? Whoa. I'm battling this dumb guy is my competition is some chick who she messes up this job. It's back to El Salvador for her ass. Right. And that's like a machete and a revolution. So she's like, (laughs) and you're like, Oh my God, you're like, my hands hurt. (laughs) It is so hot in here. I mean, she's crushing it, dude. And she, her and the other girl, they're in competition with each other. Like they're having fun. (laughs) He, he, ho. I don't yeah. sleep on a floor anymore, you know, and it's just like, and I'm like, oh god, yeah, this is when's lunch? <laughs> like, this what is job really did hard. You, what job did you have before that? Like, you I was always from, like a warehouse guy. So um, you went from that type of job to like, a, like working to make locks. So like the like you thought it was going to be a move up or something. Well, or? you know what? It was uh, the economy had uh, tanked, and um, I'm you know I'm going to do what I got to do. And that's the job I got. There wasn't a lot of jobs out at the time. And, you know, I'm not about just sitting around. So I'm going to make some money. And it's not a lot of money, but it's money. And uh, it's honest. I mean, I probably should have sold cocaine and like, let's get this party started for a little while. But I also can't do prison time. So it's working in a lock factory. We'll do. But I met a lot of characters, yeah. dude. I met some s- characters like, wow. And yeah. so... I, that's how I take life. That's how I take yeah, life. Yeah. I was like, all right, you're going to be a writer. You're going to be a comedian. This is where life is, right? It's it's yep. in places like this. You know, there was a dude that did 25 years like in prison. Wow. Yeah. And like he had just gotten out. It's cool black guy, like good looking dude. You know, and he told me, he's like, you know, straight up, Craig. He goes, uh, I didn't grow up in the hood. I didn't grow up in the ghetto. He goes, my parents worked hard, dude. He goes, we were upper middle class. My dad had his own mm-hmm. business. He goes, but I like that gangster shit. I was a mm. gangster. He goes, and one night, me and my buddy, <laughs> we went to rob a drug dealer. He goes, and that dude called the cops. He goes, who calls the cops when mm. you're already a criminal? He goes, that guy did. And so it was uh, it was robbery with a gun. And dude, yeah, homie did 25 years. Dang. And he'll never commit another crime again. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he he got his life again. And he became a truck driver. So that's probably what he's doing right now. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. But so you met all these dudes. Another guy, he was just a crackhead and he robbed a liquor store with a, he went in with a gas can and he poured it on the counter and he said, I'm going to light this motherfucker on fire with his kids in the car. Whoa. 
with his kids in the car. Wow. And while we were at work, like he's on parole, he just did five years. He started smoking crack again. And you're like, oh, he's going back to jail in no time at all. In no time at all, he's going back to jail. So that was that job. And I know we just sidetracked. And then so one day while I'm out there smoking cigarettes with all these parolees and shit, and I'm just like, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, what are you doing, dude? I was like, this is dead. This is fucking dead. And I get a call and it's Matt Fultra. Me and him, uh, you know, two or three years before that, we were playing in a band together. And um, the band never went anywhere. Like right when we got like 10 songs and we were like, dude, this is tight. We should record it. We should start playing. Uh, The guitarist broke up the band. And um, but me and Matt would always in between on breaks and stuff, we'd chat it up and just make each other laugh and uh, he needed a new podcast partner. And he's like, hey, dude, you want to do a podcast, dude? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, bro, I do. And boom, <laughs> that was that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, That's we great. jive. We jive. Matt Fultron, man, he's a great dude. He's a smart guy. He is. He told me, you know what, because, you know, I was in the car with him before I started my podcast. And I go, because I had one back in the day with another guy who's from the radio. Like, he used to be on the radio mm-hmm. in LA. And, um, you know, so for him, it was a step down podcast. Sure. He's like, he's like, you know, I guess like in radio, you're like, every time I open that mic, it's I'm in the air chair and millions of Los <laughs> Angeles are listening to me. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And I'm, but I don't know. Are they, I don't know, but uh, you know, but I'm thinking with the podcast, I'm like being, I was excited. I was like, you do whatever you want. Yeah, you do whatever you want. I was—I remember this is like in 2011, like 10 years ago, nine years ago, somewhere in there. Right. I remember going to, to performing in Salt Lake City, and this lady, she brought like 12 friends. Like, there's already like the whole audience; it's packed, and then right. this, this whole table was reserved because they were fans of the podcast. And I remember coming Word. back to Ilya. I go, I go, dude, you don't get it, man. Like, like there's people that are listening. They're out I there. Go, I go to Dallas, and people come out. I went to Utah; right. they come out. And That's right. You know, and I've met like, a few of them, dude, and I love them. It's great, right? Like, I love he, them. He he quit and wanted to move on, and so I was like, kind of like deject. I was like, ah, we did all these episodes, so I didn't start up again until 2018, and 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 I, but before I started up again, Matt goes, I go, you go, you know, I go, should I get a partner? What should I do? And he, he so I try to book big guests. Like I didn't really, I was just, I just wanted to ask, you know, what he goes, man, you know, he goes, you know what I do. He goes, just get two friends that you can talk with again and again yep. and again and again and again. Two guy, two buddy, and the audiences they'll they'll sense that chemistry. And yeah, I thought that's and that's kind of the direction I've taken this. I'm like, I yeah. want it to be people I like, people I admire, people I I I know or I listen to or right. You know, I I've had people reach out and they're like, hey, can we book your podcast? We can get you. And I'm like, I don't want to be an interviewer. You know, like, I mean, I would, but I just don't. It's not really what I want to do right now. Like somebody right. I, I don't care about at all, like some sport that I have no interest in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Well, podcast for me is um, like what I used to always say to people is like, if you could, if you could somehow get what you get outside the comedy store, when comics are just talking or outside the club, everybody's on stage and there's just a few people bullshitting. If you could put that, if you could get a sh- that show, that on a show, it's mm-hmm. going to be the best goddamn thing out there. And that's all podcasts are. It's, it's you know, you get a few comedians together and they just talk. Because comedians say the weirdest shit. <laughs> they talk about whatever because most of us just don't care. And we have usually have wild stories for some damn reason. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we just, you know, grow up around weirdos. I don't know. And I think, you know, we have the ability, especially you, when I listen to you, you have the ability to, to tell these stories and make it entertaining. You know, you're not, Oh, that's just, cool. Thank you. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's like, um, <clears throat> by the way, I, I, I may have mentioned this to you on the phone or on the previous podcast, but you know, I know you lived in Bakersfield for a while. Um, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> what yeah. ages were you when you lived in Bakersfield? Uh, well, we moved there. Um, let's see. Mount St. Helens blue around 81 or 82. And it covered our town, buried our town, Moses Lake, Chico's. And <laughs> after, I don't know, eight months of that, my dad's just like, we got to go. I mean, there's like a foot of ash in our town. Gosh, yeah. And so my dad's just like, there's no work. 
and um, we're moving to California, which I was like, yeah, California, <laughs> you know, like Karate Kid, you know, cool, cool Freeze summer. Company, Karate yeah. Kid, every <laughs> every movie TV show you've ever seen. They film like Venice Beach. And yeah. And when we got to Bakersfield, I was, you know, I was probably like 11 or 12. And I was just like. Wow, look at this dump. It looks like uh, the one we just left. I was like, uh, when are we getting to California? He's like, this is it, buddy. We're in California. I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, it's Bakersfield. He goes, oh. He goes, yeah, not that California. Uh-uh. He goes, nobody lives there. <laughs> the oil derricks, you know, those things that go up and down. Just yeah, like- that's it, dude. That's it. Hot as Hades and just like, oh. ugh. What you know, some- funny. Go, so from, go ahead. From, well, what I was going to say is, there was like three because I go back, you know, four sometimes between the farm up near Fresno and, and Burbank. And yeah. And, uh, you know, just, you know, and, and I remember like three times I saw people walking on the Highway 99, <laughs> like like literally like there's that cement divider that separates northbound and southbound. Yeah. And there yeah. was a guy up there just like balancing, like walking. And I'm like, holy cow. I'm telling you, I, they're all messed out. I'm already telling you, they've been up for like four or five days. They're spun out of their fucking mind. They're listening to voices in their head. Mm. And yeah, dude, that's Bakersfield, man. Bakersfield is a trip. It's a trip. Not a lot of people listen to podcasts in Bakersfield. They listen to the voices in their head. That's right. Yeah, folks. that's Hey-o. right. Hey, <laughs> my, uh, my friend's b- boyfriend, <laughs> Oh, she he's from LA and he's a military guy. Like he's, he's, he's one of these total military guys. And when he came to Bakersfield with her, he said, he goes, I've never seen like this level of white trash. She's all, it's like, there's white trash. He goes, and then there's Bakersfield white trash. <laughs> he goes, it's yeah. this whole other weird level of like, yeah. weird I, I don't even know how to explain it dude and and then also the air quality the air is like there's black it looked what did the one girl said yeah when we came over the grapevine it looked like god was smoking a cigarette like the way the, <laughs> like just yeah. this black cloud that just kind of hangs over bakersfield in this haze and it's it's just ugh it's so you know trippy. what's funny though to, to me like when i leave when i leave la and i go over the grapevine and then it's all, you know, it's super steep. And then it goes down and it's like run- runaway trucks go over here. Yeah. Runaway <laughs> trucks go. And then you look and it's just all flat. I actually, for me, I love that because everything sure. is it's just like, wow, it's just agriculture and the squares. And it just reminds me of like, like, like I'm, I'm going down to the Valley. Like I'm away from like the Hollywood scene and I'm going sure. to like, you know, and, and my friend calls it that, that certain view when you, he goes, he goes, Oh, you mean when you enter the land of Oz, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that is but, kind of the but instead of the colored version you're back into the black and white <laughs> yeah well my friend yeah. she had a she had a boss who's from kansas city and he he moved to la worked in la for a while and he's just like ah oh, man i just i miss home he's like he's like i miss kansas and the guy goes oh his brother goes dude have you ever get just driven up north and he goes no he goes head north get on the 99 and he said when he came over the grapevine, he was just like, ah, the Midwest. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and when yeah. he came into Bakersfield, he goes, this is Kansas. He goes, I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to go home. And so he just stayed yeah. in Bakersfield. Yeah. Hey, there's a, there's a place I perform out there and I'm going to be doing a show soon. It's a, it's a Tembler Brewing Company. It's, mm. it's a block away from um, Buck Owens Palace. Have you been to Tembler yet? Have you been there? No, I mean, dude, that, that area where they, put buck owens palace was it's always just a truck stop area and you know there's a strip club out there and a shady drug hotel but it's kind of a little classier now because they put the uh buck owens uh the palace <laughs> yeah, out there that buck Owen, and then that tembler's new it's been i think it's only been there for maybe uh, four years or something and there's like okay a whole, like children's like uh like like I think it's like a video game thing. It's all, all this. There's a lot of cool things in that that area right right now. Like oh, that's and, uh, crazy. That's um, crazy to me. It, dude. It's 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 a trip, and it's funny because <laughs> it's like a literally of... a strip club and meth prostitutes. That's used in a Denny's. That's all that used wow. to be over there. <laughs> so yeah. now that they've made it like, hey, it's Bakersfield's, <laughs> you know, fun and yeah. romp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this yeah. is like weird. <laughs> yeah, they uh, there there must be. 
there's definitely some money there as well, probably from the oil guys. Cause I did a yeah. show and this guy was like, um, I should, I should have followed up because at the time I, I, I handed it off to my manager. Cause the guy was like, he's like, yeah, there's about 12 of us ranchers and we have like a little luncheon and we'd like to pay you to come out. And, but it sounded kind of weird. I was like, well, what is this? You know, but, 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 but no, nah, yeah, I know. Right. I just, there's I know. a lot of money like, out there, dude. There's a, Oh, I'm know, telling I, you, yeah, it's like, you're either it's like, you're, yeah, yeah, you're either poor in Bakersfield or you're you're fine. Yeah, you're doing fine, or you're walking on the night. Yeah, or you're walking down it. the middle of the freeway. <laughs> yeah, but here's what's funny to me: like Fresno, whenever we go on our um our turn like our speech and debate team like tournaments or any kind of sure. athletic things where we'd have to go to Bakersfield, I always thought Bakersfield was like like better than Fresno because it looked. I was like, wow, it's like closer to L.A. Like those are it's in my mind. I was like, it's basically L.A. I mean, For me, really, it but, is. For me, it yeah. is because of that, yeah. because yeah. Um, Bakersfield, they'll always tell you the same thing. Like anybody, if you talk smack about Bakersfield, they go, let me tell you something about Bakersfield. It's two hours away from everything. Awesome. Yeah. And they're right. They're like, go two hours that way. You're at the beach. Two hours this way. You're skiing. Two hours that way. Vegas. Two hours that way. L.A. And they're right. It's like, and Bakersfield <laughs> may suck, but it's two hours away from all things cool. <laughs> That's hilarious. Cause in Fresno, we always say four hours, you know, it's like four hours from Yosemite, four hours from the ocean, right? four hours from <laughs> what San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's somewhere in there. I don't, I mean, if you go faster, obviously, but like, yeah, you guys gotta, yeah, you guys gotta drive. Yeah. Bakersfield, psh, just hop in your ride, dude. Hop in the dip, just $20 of the no, gas no. back in the day, and you're in LA. Yeah, Fresno, we're like to brag. We're like, we're only two hours from Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> the big city. <laughs> now, you guys were always the bigger city and like concerts. You guys had concerts. Mm -hmm. Like bands would literally drive from LA past Bakersfield. Oh, yeah. And wouldn't play their next show until they got to like Sacramento and Fresno. But yeah. Bakersfield, nah. Most people just drove right past, like not even <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bakersfield actually is a good place just to take a day trip. Like if people just want to get out. Like I was watching this one vlogger and um, shout out to Jordan the Lion. And he's like walking his dog at dog park and doing some Hollywood stuff. And he's like, now we're going to go for a road trip. Next thing you know, he's going over the grapevine. And he went to Buck Owens Palace and filmed a band and you know, hit up some antique store. Oh, there's a Woolworths in Bakersfield. It yeah. looks like it's still there. Like it's an, an antique old, store. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it that I saw a Woolworths. I was like, wow. Right. right. The lunch counter might actually be open. I, I, I could be wrong on that. I think he was at the lunch counter and you're right. He did go to the antique. Uh, he looked at some antiques and then I think there's another one across the street that he went to. Yeah, downtown is... Uh, it's interesting. It's nice. It's cool. It's old. Um, it's a trippy place. Like I said, it's a trippy place. If you ever want to see the de-evolution of humankind, go to the Walmart on Panama and it'll blow your mind. It'll blow oh. your ever living mind. You'll be the like 99 this. in the Panama. You're like, Panama. this is what's wrong with America. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm <laughs> watching the decline. <laughs> Dude, I like the In-N-Out Burger, though. Do you ever go to the In-N-Out Burger right there? On 99 um, in Panama? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I like In and Out. Yeah, I used to, um, but um, I'm more of a, a Five Guys now. Oh, Five Guys. Yeah, I like yeah. Five Guys. That's yeah. good. And I, I like that you can eat peanuts while you're waiting for your meal. Yeah, dude. And also, the line for In and Out is outrageous. Why wait? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not that great. Yeah, it's not that great. Like if if the line's too long, I, I skip it. But if it's if it's not long, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm and that one in Bakersfield's always packed. That whole area is just always insane. Like I said, there's two taco trucks out there and they're both really good. Yeah. In the parking lot of the gas stations. That's where I would, <laughs> that's where I prefer to eat. I know. Gosh. You know what? I, was, I, I think for dinner, I'm just going to have an apple, man. I, I, I did pretty good today and I got that new scale. So I don't want to, I don't know. I'm trying to keep, you know what? I'm inspired. I had Lee on, Lee Sayet, Joey Diaz, a sidekick co host uh -huh. on the Church of What's Happening. Right. And Lee, uh, he really blew up weight wise. He's five, four and he weighed 338 pounds. Okay. And he lost 50 pounds. I heard, actually, I heard that he lost 51 pounds. So it actually inspired me. Just you go, like, dude. You know, let me just kind of, he's killing it. Oh you know, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I don't know how he's, I think he, um, oh yeah. He started up a side pod, another podcast. It's like, um, 
it's like love line except it's called waistline and it's all like weight loss experts and okay sure like that. like sure you know yeah it's it's interesting what people come up with you know right and, uh, speaking of coming up with i want to end the show with this unless there's anything is there anything i'm leaving out anything you wanted to get to no no it's a treat having you on yeah no Craig, it's great to be here dude always Craig coleman look him up on on instagram what's your instagram oh shoot i think it's Craig Coleman, 76. I think you're right. I want to ask you this, though. In yeah, man. Um, do you have any words of wisdom? Anything you'd like to share with our viewers, our listeners? Shoot. Something you've learned along the way. You're a pretty smart guy, streetwise guy, street smart guy. Just mm -hmm. things you've learned along along the way. Words of wisdom. I don't know. I think, um, I think honestly, the only thing... Yeah, Craig Coleman, 76 at Instagram. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think I've always just said, if you know, you got to do what you want to do. Uh, you can't get in the hole of negativity. You can't, uh, I've lived my life that way for a long time where I was just like, nah, you know, you never win, you know, and guess what? You don't, when you, uh, <laughs> when you talk like that and you constantly think like that, you don't win and it's a constant loss and you're like, my life sucks. And it's like, yes, because you <laughs> yeah. keep saying that. And you kind of you kind of got to trick yourself into being like, everything's going to be OK. And, you know, it's not like life turns out peachy all of a sudden, but life does get better. And uh, as cheesy as all that may sound, it's just a better way to be all around than um, just constantly beating yourself up and constantly being like, I never, it's never, never, never. And then, you know, you put that out there and never, never, never is always going to be there. So you just, I listened to this dude. His name is uh, Do Doxy, D-A-U-S-C-H-Y. Uh, when I fall asleep and it's, uh, he's just, it's just positive thoughts and it's, um, it sounds stupid, but uh, uh, abundance is in your life, how to attract money and stuff like that. And so I can tell you is starting in August when I started doing that, my life got a little bit better. That's all That's I can true. tell you. And you you're know, absolutely like, right. You know, you can believe it or not. And one of my friends, I told her that she's the most negative person I've ever met in my life. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to try that. And I am not shitting you. Her life changed a fucking hundred percent. And she's mm. like pretty, she's doing pretty good from where she was a year ago. And I was shocked that because she's absolutely the person that you would tell her that she'd be like, oh, there's nothing positive. But she didn't do that this time. And she just totally has changed her life. I think that's 100% right. You know, um, it's just like with negative talk, negative talk can, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you, you know, I've been doing this, uh, you know, w when I'm out in the boonies, I, I go to the local like Starbucks and I sit in the parking lot because they won't allow you to sit inside. <laughs> and I upload, I upload to YouTube and, and especially these files are very long. They're like an hour long. So, oh, sure. so if, it's, if an hour long file, it's, you're going to be in that parking lot for who knows how long over yeah. two hours. And it was just really slow one day. And I, and I, like an idiot, I had to use the restroom. So I shut the computer to go use the restroom. I come back and then I had to restart all over again. It didn't start. It didn't leave where I left it off. It, it was all like right. 55%. I had to start all over again from square one. And I'm like, dang, I'm having a bad day. And then another thing happened. And I caught myself the second time going, this is a bad day. And I thought, that's negative talk. I keep telling myself it's a bad day. Guess what? I'm going to find things that make it a bad day. And I, I said, don't do that, Darren. And, and as I said that, I thought, you know what? The three hours, it's behind me. I, I already, I uploaded it. You know, it wasn't the, yeah. I wasn't in a coal mine. I wasn't like Craig working at right. a rock factory, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, Ex-cons. I, exactly. I was in my car. I was playing right. on my phone. I was sitting there for three hours it was like, or whatever, two hours. It was uncomfortable, right. but whatever. It's not the end of the world. You got it's a family a to go to. And yeah, I do. And it was a, the time change happened. So I'm like, you know what? I still got like three more, four more hours of sunlight. Let's get out there and ride my bike and have a great day. Cause I said, the day's not over with. I literally changed my mindset. You know, the old me would have been, it's a bad day, it's a bad day, it's a bad day, and then taking a nap for two hours, and that's not good. <laughs> right. <laughs> you ever right. do that? You right. just, it's a bad day. Yeah, shut it day. down. I'm shutting it down. Yeah. yeah. The factory's closed. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. for sure. For sure. <laughs> well, man, I'm, I'm sharing that story because I know people out there need to hear this and they need to, to, to see it. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Craig, for being on. Absolutely. Let's do, it, let's do it again soon. For sure. We're done with this interview. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party yeah, star. So if rides. you want to listen to a podcast that's free, then listen yeah. to... Pocket party. Wheelbarrow's this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go in front of you. <laughs>